from the gospel the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into his ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen, Amen. some of you may have seen that video clip that has made the rounds several times on YouTube in the video a ship's captain is on the bridge of a massive warship and the radar operator sings out there's a contact in front of them collision course and the captain orders radio contact established tells that radar contact change course immediately 20 degrees to your right the person on the other end said, Captain, I suggest you change your course 20 degrees to your right. The captain was outraged. How dare anyone suggest that a powerful military vessel should change its course? So he ordered again, suggested that the two would collide if the warship or if the other contact does not change its course. And the answer came back on the radio calmly. I'm a lighthouse mate, your call. <laughs> a lighthouse is an unmovable guide in the midst of dark storms. Ships ignore the warnings put out by lighthouses at their peril. For a Christian, Jesus is our lighthouse and we ignore his warnings at our peril. Jesus is our lighthouse. The scriptures are the warnings being broadcast to a world that is in peril. And if we wish to remain safe from sin and be able to make a passage to eternal life in our safe port, then we must obey those warnings. In our gospel reading this evening, Jesus got into a boat. He went to sea, but not very far. He only sat down on the boat in order to speak to the crowd. And from that place, he proceeded to teach the people who had come from near and far lessons, which he taught them in the form of a parable. Now, parables are stories intended to teach a lesson, but they're stated in terms that anyone can understand. And Jesus said, there are four possible reactions that people may have to the Word of God. The hardened soil of the path will not allow any lesson to penetrate, just as it is hardened by those who have passed by, so that it's no longer open to anything new like seed. That seed which was cast there, the Word cast there, is left on the surface, and it's eaten by birds. We might well think of people who spent many hours on the sea, they think they know better than the warnings of a lighthouse, and so they ignore <laughs> its lights and sirens and horns. And they stray perilously close to the rocks. And you know, we oftentimes will find the wrecks of their boats on the rocks, crushed and broken. The second kind of ground that Jesus described is rocky. But there is a shallow surface of soil there. There, seed spread may initially start to grow, but there's insufficient soil for the seed to grow roots and become stable, and so those plants eventually die. We might think of these as being much like that sailor who, when he first learns to sail, he, he, <coughs> he heeds the warnings of the lighthouse, but with time, he loses the memory of his lessons. He begins to stray ever closer to the rocks, thinking, oh, nothing can ever happen to me. It'll all be okay, until he finds disaster and death. Consider those people here who perhaps come to church one or two days a year. They think that's enough to feed their souls. They become Christians in name only but not in practice. And that reality is evident in their lives. The third kind of soil 
described by our Lord as good, but the environment, if you will, around it is bad. Here, the seeds do germinate and spring up, and they flourish, but thorns and weeds also spring up, and the seed is choked out, and it dies. Jesus says this represents those who are drawn away from their faith and their learning by temptation and sins of the world until they find a deadly end. This is perhaps like the sailor who, while he intended to follow the warnings of the lighthouse, he was pushed by tide and current too close, and despite his best intentions and perhaps even his efforts, he too was wrecked on the rocks because he didn't stay far enough away. He strayed into bad waters. Finally, the good soil, where the spread seed grows well and it produces as it should. These are people who not only hear the word, they put it into practice every day. They live it out fully, carefully. These are those who put God first in their lives and they put the ephemeral things of the world second. These are the sailors who know well the ways of the sea and they give that lighthouse wide berth knowing it offers them safety and peace if they will just heed its warnings. And they don't do that just on some days. They don't do it just when the stormy weather comes, just when they feel like it and want to show off. They do it every day because they know it is their life. These are the wise sailors. They're the ones who become old, making many trips to and fro across the waters bringing cargo and passengers with them to safe port. And not only do they keep themselves and their charges safe, they influence others by their example. They bear fruit many times over, as Christ said, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. For the seed of God, His Word, to be of any use in our lives, we have to let it germinate in our hearts. Our heart is the soil that Jesus spoke of in the parable. It becomes good soil when we spend time in prayer and meditation, when we speak to God and when we read His Word contained in the Holy Scriptures. We have the choice of whether to be that good and safe sailor or the one who ends up with his vessel crushed on the rocks. In order to be the safe sailor, we must heed the lighthouse, the word of God. We cannot presume that we know better and that we are wiser than God. To do so is foolish. We also cannot demand that God should change his mind and go along with what we want. That too is foolish and it's deadly. We must be the wise soilers who know and they understand the warnings of the lighthouse. They proceed in accordance with them. We must be the ones who constantly study the new charts and maps of the sea, the scriptures, so that we can always navigate our lives safely. And if we do that, we will have pleasant and safe journeys. Let us pray. Dear Lord, grant us the wisdom always to follow your instructions and warnings that in our travels and in our lives we may, may remain safe and free from sin and ill. And this we pray of your mercy. Amen. Amen.